There would have been thousands of different themes, as wild and wacky as you like, uh, exploring every possibility. And the management, the product group will uh, work with me to select the very best themes there. Then we'll actually produce a scale clay model of the car. We had to go out and recruit some of the best clay modelers out there. And I have to say, we got a great team together. Now, Joel, uh, as chief engineer, was encouraged to develop a higher output for the LS3 engine for club sport. And he was always very cautious about that, not knowing whether he could deliver it. No, Joel, Joel's like this with his numbers. I'm not going to tell anyone what the number is in case it isn't the number I say the first time. And in the end, when he came in and told us that the LS3 engine had been tuned to 340 kilowatts, he had a wry smile, but he wasn't excited. LSA is the supercharged 6.2 litre engine. If we could get our hands on that, we knew we could match Camaro's. You should have seen a smile when he walked in a few weeks later and told us what the power output he'd achieved on the LSA engine that, that went into the GTS. It's 430 kilowatts and 740 newton meters. You couldn't stop him smiling. And, and everybody walked out of that meeting on a high, you know, we, we were slapping hands and doing high fives because that is truly exciting. By far the most powerful car we've ever built and the most powerful car ever made in Australia. Design and engineering do have a bit of a love-hate relationship. Um, Julian's uh, always designing cars that look fantastic but uh, almost impossible to make and, and I'm the one that has to go and tell him that he can't have them. There'll be uh, the odd There'll be an odd fierce word or two between us. Um, he'll go away, I'll come over here, I'll, I'll probably have a bit of a bitch to Phil. Phil is a very reasonable man. <laughs> the car has to perform, uh, it also has to look good, so, you know, Julian will push his side and I'll push mine, and we usually have to call on the managing director to come in and sort it out. In Joel's perspective, Julian's designing um, ideas that can't be made and Julian feels that Joel's holding him back with the creativity spirit. They'll come and lob me individually and, and think that I'm on their side and my job is to make sure we've got a balance there. We developed two strong themes on the front. We went from our four themes down to the two. Um, we were good to go and then um, the engineers came in and they talked about the need for more cooling and I'd given them some more cooling. I'd probably given them 10% more. For some reason, Julian wanted to have a, a smaller mouth as possible, and we needed as big a mouth as possible, so... Um, sometimes it didn't matter how, what I said. I said, on 300 square millimetres of area, he'd come back and say, there you go, there's 280. And they said, well, actually, we need two-thirds more cooling than you have on the current car. So that kind of changed everything. I don't know if there's room for a bumper anymore at the front, Julian said to me one day, because Engineering wants so much cooling performance out of this car, there's very little room for a bumper to be left. Do you not understand this car's going to look awful? But we go home from work, we, we drive our HSVs home, we probably have a drink or two, and then, then you start to focus on the really big picture, which is this car's got to perform like no other car out there. It's got to have that cooling. I, I, I want to give them what they want, but I also need it to look great too. It was a win-win in the end. Uh, I got the cooling that uh, we needed, and I think Julian got the, the design he, he wanted. So, yeah, it just, it just took a while to, for us to, to find that happy medium. I've heard journalists tell me that the engine... Oh, yes, of course, the engine will go into the Zeta platform, which is the name of the platform, so it must be easy. It's not. That program started with a huge level of conflict in terms of the engine not going into the car. And it, it didn't fit anywhere. I remember the engine uh, fouled with the hood, uh, none of the air system, airbox fitted, uh, gearbox didn't fit, um, rear end didn't fit, tail shaft was too long. Uh, we couldn't package uh, the, the gear shifter in through the floor, it was clashing, and uh, the powertrain team and myself were starting to get very concerned that we couldn't deliver this car. It was a real challenge, and that's the sort of I guess, challenge that the guys that work here love trying to sort out. Um, in the face of that sort of adversity, uh, it, it took us about three months, but um, finally we, we could front up to the management team and say, 
we can make it fit. It was the beginning of, uh, you know, we, we're going to make this happen. We had to seriously look at the chassis uh, system, the brakes. Uh, we looked at new tyres and the drivetrain was all upgraded for this around the, the increased power. Um, we've also upgraded our technologies like EDI. And basically the EDI system picks up all the signals that are travelling around the electrical circuitry of the car and turns them into information that's useful for the owner. So the G-force meter, for example, says a car, and then you can see the various peak holes of what the G-force is when you go around a corner, or if you brake, or if you accelerate. When we release parts to engineering, um, they'll work with the tool makers and, and the suppliers in terms of getting a part that they can produce. Most of our components will go through several stages of, of testing. Uh, it's broken down into bench testing, so say a, a powertrain component could be tested on a, on a bench in tool failure. It's also tested inside the, the car, so it's driven on a durability course to test for failure, and then it'll have corrosion or weather resistance as well.